It's stitching, it's stitching, it's stitching. Hey everyone, my name is Steven and I am a photographer and podcaster based in Chicago, Illinois. Today I'm going to show you how to create a Brenizer portrait with medium format film. So for those of you who don't know what a Brenizer portrait is, Brian Brenizer, a wedding photographer, pioneered and popularized this technique in 2008. Basically, instead of a, a landscape panorama where you have all these images that you stitch together to make a wider image, he decided to instead take images in a portrait orientation and create a portrait that had a lot more depth to it than what one single image could give you. This is also known as a bokeh panorama or portrait panorama for that very reason. Now typically when I make these portrait panoramas, these Brenizer portraits, I use a full frame camera and I take anywhere from nine to 15 images and I end up with a final image that feels more like a medium format image because it has all that extra depth that you typically find in a medium format camera. Instead of that, I'm going to use a medium format camera to hopefully get more of a large format feeling final stitched Brenizer portrait. So the interesting thing about when I usually use my Canon R6 to make these Brenizer portraits, I usually back button focus and I'll lock that focus on the first image and then I'll keep that locked focus for the remaining images that I take around that first image. My Mamiya does not have back button focusing. It only focuses when you half press the shutter. So what I'm gonna try instead is half press the shutter, lock focus on the first image, and then actually switch the camera to manual focus. So that way I'm able to take the other images around it without it trying to refocus. So that way it all keeps focus on the same part of the image. That's my beanie, beanie song. You know the song that you have when you're adjusting your beanie? Yeah. I wish I have a beanie song. Yeah, beanie, baby. <laughs> and if you remember all of that, you'll be safe. Remove this band entirely. Load in subdued light. It's overcast. I don't think that counts. That should be fine. Okay, now that we're back in the studio, let's open up Lightroom and start to stitch these images together. After importing the scanned negatives into Lightroom, select your first image and click Control N to open up Negative Lab Pro, which is my favorite film conversion plugin. Paste that edit on the next images in your Brenizer portrait. Make sure the crops don't include any of the black borders of the film strip. In the next step, you typically select your images, right click and select Merge, but for whatever reason, it turns into a monster like this. <laughs> so instead, we'll select the images and export them as JPEGs first. Don't export them as TIFFs because the colors get weird when you make them a panorama later. Re-import these new JPEGs, select all of them, and click Panorama. It's important to toggle between each of the cylindrical, spherical, and perspective options to see which one works best for that specific image. Some of these specific portraits got a little weird in the panorama stitching process, which is normal, so I also played with the perspectives tools to keep the faces looking normal. Now, here are all of the Brenizer portraits that I took of Eric and Jean.
All in all, I am really happy with how this experiment turned out, and if anything, it's encouraged me to keep trying making Brenizer portraits on medium format film. And I'm really thankful to Eric and Jean for helping me film and model for the video as well. So links to their channels are going to be below. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below telling me what your favorite Brenizer portrait was, and I'll catch you in the next video.